Hey everyone, it's Andrew, and in this video, what we're going to do is set up an egress only internet gateway. I just want to point out that utilizing IPv6 is extremely difficult. What I wanted to do in this lab was to set up an EC2 instance uh, and test that EC2 instance had an outbound uh, connection. However, IPv6 is notoriously difficult to troubleshoot and debug. And, um, you know, I found out that IPv6 still does not have sufficient support on AWS. So at this time of making this video, I don't really recommend to use IPv6, but we do learn about IPv6 as much as we can, just in the case that it does become easier to use in the future. But we will go through the process of um, adding an egress only internet gateway, but we're not gonna be able to verify um, if it's truly working because we're not gonna launch a real EC2 instance. But let's go over and go through the process of set, uh, setting up an uh, egress only um, egress only internet gateway. First, we'll create a VPC. I'm gonna make it VPC only because I don't want it to create an existing internet gateway. And we'll call this EIGW, we'll these for the egress only. Um, VPC example, I suppose, might be better. Then down below, we'll do 10.0.0.0 forward slash 24, which is fine. Now, since this is for IPv6, we're gonna say we want to use the Amazon provided IPv6. We'll let the network border group be whatever it wants to be. So CA Central makes sense for myself because that's where I am. Of course, you would not change it to somewhere else, so that absolutely makes sense. We'll go down below and create the VPC. Now, to create the egress-only internet gateway, we're going to go ahead and create an egress-only internet gateway. It's going to call this my EIGW. And uh, notice that we can select our VPC. When you create um, an internet gateway, you'll normally create it and then attach it, but this one, they do it in one go, so it really saves you a bit of time. And so now that egress-only internet gateway is attached, we need to update our route table. So if we refresh here, we now have a main route table for our new VPC. We're gonna click into that. We're gonna to go to routes. We're gonna edit the routes. We're gonna add a new route. We're going to go to egress only internet gateway. We'll drop this down. I'm gonna go over to colon colon forge slash zero and we'll save those changes. And so now this route table has an outbound connection to uh, via the uh, egress internet gateway, very similar to the internet gateway. Another thing, because we're just talking about subnets in general or sorry, IPv6 in general, if we wanted to, we could create our uh, subnet and I just want to show that you can set a subnet to be only IPv6 so we'll just go my uh, subnet 01 here and uh, I actually found out that it does matter what um, region you're in because some regions might not be able to support specific EC2 instance types so if, if we we're using a T2 micro it actually won't operate in uh, 1D so here I have to choose 1A again we're not going to launch an EC2 instance but if I wanted to uh, that would be a challenge. Then since we chose, actually we do want the IPv6, it's no IPv4, sorry, got that backwards. But if we, we go ahead here, we can select 56. 56 I don't think is the largest range, but it is very large. Notes here on the right hand side when we're choosing our CIDR block range, um, it says 4,7223Q. I think the Q stands for quatillion. So understand there's way more than 4,000 here. But this one's matching the exact same size as the entire CIDR block. So you probably want to have more than one subnet. So if we click down, notice it's gonna to go to 295.1 quatillion. So you could really reduce this if you want to 64, uh, which would give you 18.4 quatillion. But the idea is that you probably will want to um, bring this down and not have it matching so that you could have more than one uh, subnet. But anyway, that is that would be our subnet there. We go ahead and create that. And another thing that we'd probably want to do in our subnet is we'd want to turn on DNS 64 because that would make traffic specifically only for um, for IPv6. So here we would go to edit subnet settings. I don't know why we didn't see that on the time of creation. So we'll go ahead and take a look here. And if we scroll on down, we can enable the DNS 64 settings. So we'll save that. And so that would be the major thing that we would need. This should auto assign IPv6. So, you know, if we launched an instance, it, we would expect it to work. I guess we could go through and just see what it looks like to uh, launch an instance. Actually, um, in a failed attempt, I was trying to create um, a CloudFormation template, and this was over here. And so if we go to IPv6, a, a very clear difference. I'll just open this up as a comparison so you at least can see the code, regardless if we'll launch an, um, an EC2 instance. But I'll split the screen here. And 
We'll look at IPv4 and then we'll look at IPv6. I'm having this uh, double click mouse issue. So just understand that uh, if I'm misclicking, it's because of that double click right now. And we, we made an, uh, a template for um, launching EC2 instance prior, but this one's a bit different because it's uploading to an S3 bucket. Uh, one thing I found out is that Sessions Manager does not work with IPv6. So the only way to get into the instance would be to do something like SSHN, which I didn't have much luck with because there's a lot of work to get IPv6 to work to debug it. Um, but in theory, what I was trying to do was I was saying, okay, let's go launch a server. And it, what it should do is create a file and put it in S3. And if it made it out to the internet because S3 is a, a public endpoint, then this would have worked. However, this example did not work. But what I want to show you is the configuration of the network interface card. So if you want to um, use IPv6, uh, you would basically have your network interface card configured on your EC2 instance. Um, and from here, we would have our subnet and our subnet would have to specify, well, we're just bringing it in, but that would obviously specify our, our IPv6 one. But under a security group, we would have to specify this CIDR IPv6. So for the standard, we have a CIDR IP for IPv4. Then when they added IPv6, they had to call it IPv6. But uh, it is pretty straightforward. Um, we wouldn't as associate a public IP address for IPv6 because all IPv6 addresses are public. But anyway, that's all I really wanted to show you. And we can go ahead and now tear this down because, again, it's just too hard to uh, show IPv6 stuff. We'll go ahead and delete this VPC. And we'll say delete. And we'll delete. And we are all done. And we'll see you in the next one, okay? Ciao.